Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Betty from Switch and Click and today we'll be talking about the difference between ANSI and ISO keyboard layouts. ANSI stands for the American National Standards Institute and ISO stands for the International Standards Organization. These are both keyboard layouts that describe the physical layout and size of each key rather than logical layouts such as Dvorak, Colmac, QWERTY, and other things like that. We've talked about that in another video that I'll link to up here and I'll link to the blog post down below as well if you're interested in learning about that. The primary difference between ANSI and ISO is in three primary keys the enter key, the left shift key, and the backslash key. In ANSI, the enter key is the very wide rectangular enter key that we usually see on our keyboard. We live in America and ANSI is very common in all American keyboards. In the ISO layout, it's an upside down L and it's tall. So it takes up the space of the backslash. It moves the backslash somewhere else. <gasps> Be right back. I need to get my whiteboard. Whiteboard is back. And markers. So what? an ISO looks like. We have the enter that's really tall and then the backslash that's really small next to it. And then here's what ANSI looks like. And that's the primary difference in the enter key. Now we'll talk about the left shift key. This is a normal left shift key, an ANSI left shift key. This is an ISO left shift key. It's split into two different keys and this key is an additional key that could be used in other languages that need an extra key. Let's talk about size. ANSI keyboards are usually 104 keys for a full-size keyboard and 87 keys for a 10 keyless keyboard. ISO keyboards, on the other hand, have one extra key due to that split of the left shifts, resulting in 105 keys for a total full-size keyboard and 88 keys for a 10 keyless. On an ISO keyboard, since it's used for languages other than English, the right alt key is an alternative graph key and this lets you push that and access the third symbol on the numbers or letters or whatever. On other languages, it's also possible to press shift and the alt graph key and then get a fourth symbol out of it. If your languages have that many symbols, the American English language does not. Okay, and one huge thing between the two is that commonality of keycaps. ANSI keys are very common among all keycap sets. Very easy to find. ISO keys, on the other hand, are more difficult. It's rare to have a group buy even offer ISO keys, and when they do, they might not hit the funding required to offer that. And when they do hit that, it's much more expensive. Many people from countries that use the ISO layout opt to use the ANSI layout because of this one disadvantage among other ones which we'll keep discussing really big things including ergonomics so if you like this video press that thumbs up button first subscribe for more videos just like this one along with keyboard reviews mechanical keyboard tips and tricks and then tips on how to do custom mechanical keyboard things as well once you really enter the mechanical keyboard enthusiast community all right let's keep moving on there's many disadvantages to having an iso keyboard and we're going to talk about some of them right now primary difference is the distance of of the enter key and the left shift key. Two very extremely commonly used keys are farther away on the ISO layout than on the ANSI layout. And then the one key that is closer, the backslash key, a very uncommonly used key, is now closer. So why is it that our pinky fingers now have to stretch three keys over to press enter or two keys over to press left shift when we could have done it jumping over one key or enter and not having to jump over anything for left shift. So which one's better? Well, the answer comes down to your preference. However, from what I've seen and from what I've read, most people do prefer the ANSI layout. The reason is because it's much more ergonomic. The most frequently used keys are much easier to reach. But if your language is a language that really, really needs that extra key, that 105th key, then you would probably go for an ISO keyboard. However, if your keyboard is fully programmable, then you can always add that extra key on another layer. So there's no need to have a keyboard with an extra key when you can just add it to any layer. Similar to how a 40% layout can access almost everything, even a number pad, if you program it onto another layer. Alongside being more ergonomic when you go the ANSI, 
fancy way, you also get more PCB options, more keycap options, more case options even. And again, not many group buys offer ISO keys and a quick Google search of ISO keycaps reveals not many options out there. But on the other hand, when you're looking at ANSI keycaps, you don't even need to type ANSI keycap. You can just type keycaps because almost all of them will be available in the ANSI layout. All right, we got some frequently asked questions. What is the JIS layout? So the JIS layout is primarily used in Japan. It's used in a way that they can add more inputs to fit their language. They also use the upside down L enter key. Their backslash is split into two keys and their space bar is split into a space bar and then three extra keys. So altogether, the JIS layout, Japanese International Standard, has five additional keys compared to the ANSI layout totaling 109 keys altogether. All right, another frequently asked question is, can my keyboard be an ANSI layout even if my language needs an ISO layout? The answer is yes, but only if you have a keyboard that's programmable. That way you can add those extra symbols on another key instead of needing that one extra one. Remember to press like if you like this video. I know it might not be super interesting. Personally, to me, it was sort of really interesting. I mean, who even hears about the difference between the American National Standards Institute layout versus the International Standards Organization layout. Like those aren't even things that we hear on a daily basis. So to me, this was a super interesting thing to learn about. And if it was for you too, please press that like button, subscribe for more videos like this one. We include the blog post down below if you wanna read and see pictures instead of my nasty drawing. Thank you so much for watching and bye.